Hey friends, back in the garage working on the Sprinter van today. Now, in today's video, I wanna show you a problem and a really good solution that we've discovered for backup camera options. Now, here is the back of our Sprinter van. As you can see, it's nice and tall. Now, because we also have a loft bed, we really have an impeded view of the back area while we're driving. So what we're gonna be testing out today and installing is a camera that's magnetized, meaning you don't have to mount it to your vehicle. Super easy, just stick on, and then it connects wirelessly to your dashboard. Now, all of the product links will be in the description below if you'd like to check it out for yourself. Let's go ahead and get started. So let's take a peek at everything that is included in this kit. So this is the box that will arrive. And then inside we have a few parts. This is gonna be our main display screen. Take a peek there. This feels like really lightweight plastic. So don't expect anything super high quality, but we're definitely gonna give it a look and a test to see what the image quality looks like. We've got the main camera unit. You can see all the lights on the outside. The main camera in the middle, there's a little sticker that's covering the lens we'll have to take off. You can see the main swivel bracket here that we can lock down to get it in the correct angle once it's on the van. And then on the back, this is where we're gonna find those super strong magnets. Again, this is what sets this apart as an item that you can install without needing to drill any kind of holes in the back of your van. We're gonna find our main power source. This is a USB. C, you can see that plugs into our main display, and we're gonna use our little carport to power this on. We've got three antenna that we can use that's gonna gather signal from the camera into our display. We've got some mounting hardware, and this is what we are going to use to have our display on our dashboard in a nice, convenient location. And finally, we have our little charging cable. This, again, is another USB-C cable and a little wall outlet. And that is gonna be plugged into this side of our camera. That's what charges the battery up. Now, that's one of the downsides of having one of these wireless systems is that you constantly have to keep the battery charged up because it's not wired into your vehicle in any way. But again, because it's magnetized, you can pull this on and off pretty easily, charge it up before your next trip. So let's go ahead and get this camera powered up first thing. Again, we'll put our little charging cable, the USB-C, into this little port right here, and we'll plug the other end into the wall using our little outlet plug. The next thing we can do is install one of the antenna here on the back of our monitor. And this is just gonna screw down into place right here on these threaded areas. Once it's on there tight, you can actually turn this top part to make sure it's bent towards this area right here. And that's again how things store if you'd like to keep it a little more flush with the main screen. While it's charging, we can actually also install the other antenna on the back of our main camera. And then again, you're just gonna install that straight on the back of there after removing that little red plastic protector piece. That looks pretty darn good. Again, we can twist this top as necessary so that the antenna angles out in the direction that we want it. So we can also take our other car charging cable and there's a little USB-C slot down in the very bottom below the little mounting bracket and you can just stick that right in there and that'll be ready to put into our little AC adapter in the vehicle. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and mount the display now here on the dash of our Sprinter van. And there's a couple ways you can do this. You can obviously use the suction cup and place it along the upper dash here. What I wanna do though, because we have such a small little radio, is actually mount it down in this area. So I'm gonna use this attachment that came with the packet. And what I'm gonna do is actually use a little sticker that it also came with. I'm gonna mount this right here, and that way the display can sit in this general area and leave our upper dash open. So again, make sure you have this little wheel already installed onto the little ball. And that's just gonna push down into the back of the display. And then we can actually take that little wheel and we can screw that down on. And that's what's gonna keep it on that ball, but also allow it to move around nice and easy and get a perfect adjustment for us. This is that little disc sticker. Make sure you don't throw this away, it's inside your packet. It's got a two-sided adhesive, so we'll peel off one edge and put that on the back of this little mount. With that stuck on there, we can then remove the top little white piece, and that's gonna give us some adhesive to now mount this in place right on our dash. Okay, and there we go. As you can see, it's stuck to that back there. Again, that's not super sturdy, but as you can see, I can jiggle it around. It's not gonna fall off. Again, the better mount for you may be using the suction cup. 
So as you can see, the wire now gives us good access down here to our lower area where I can plug it into the 12 volt. Now, unfortunately, cable management is kind of an issue. As you can see, that wire is going to hang down. A Little bit annoying that we can't hide that better, but I did take all of the excess and I just shoved it into our little slot holder right here. And that cleans things up just a little bit. Now with the vehicle in the on position, we can then actually push that button and we'll get it to power on. Okay, so we've got our camera here. I'm gonna go ahead and power it on. I'm just gonna push and hold that power button for a couple of seconds. And then actually this auto pairs really, really quickly. It paired from the factory. And as you can see, we've already got an image there. So it looks like I'm moving my, my hand. You can see there's a little bit of a delayed image, but not that bad. So right out of the gate, this thing just works. That's pretty dang cool. Now, when the camera is powered on, you can get an idea of how much power is left by looking at these little blue lights. Now, one of the other things we can do is come up here and this is going to give us those little lines. If I push and hold that button, you may have seen this on your backup camera. It just gives you some indication of when you are getting close to obstacles. Again, you have the option to push that on or off using this little button up here. Now, I do notice that pushing these buttons, sometimes they're a little bit unresponsive. See, if I push it like that, you almost have to push and hold. And as you can see, it took a couple of times. So again, as far as buttons goes, a little bit unresponsive. Now, one of the other things this has is a menu. So if I click on that, we're going to get some menu options here. You can see we have picture. We've got the mirror or the flip option where you can turn the picture upside down. And we also have some system settings. So know that you have some options up here using that menu button. The other thing we can check is our antenna strength. And again, we have full signal, but again, we are only just a couple of feet away. So I think it's time to go put this on the back of the van. All right, back at the back of the Sprinter van again, it's time to get this thing mounted. Now we're gonna be mounting this up top here. Just makes it harder for people to get. Although it looks like it's installed, again, if somebody knew what they were doing, they could actually just pull this straight off the back of your van. So having it nice and high up is going to be better for us. So make sure this area is clean. You want anything impeding the magnetism of this item, but watch how easy this is now. So up on top, we're gonna to get close to center as possible without going over the line, obviously. How about right here? And there you go. That thing is actually on there. I'm like jiggling it really hard and it it is just barely moving. I can kind of push it around if I give it a good push, but that thing is really on there. So nice and strong. Okay, so the last thing we need to do is make sure we have a good angle on this. I'm guessing somewhere around here is gonna be good. Again, we'll have to kind of look at the console and just make sure we're pointed in the right direction. Now, once you think you have the right angle, these little posts are gonna feed into the hole that is inside attached to the camera. And again, we'll just rotate those in all the way. There's gonna be one on each side. Don't snug it down super tight. Again, we just want them in there and then this will rotate up. And as soon as we have the right angle, we can crank those down. Again, make sure you get one on each side here. And that looks pretty good. Okay, again, I'm gonna angle it about like that. And then we'll just crank down on these wheels on either side. Okay, with everything in place, let's hit that power button again. Okay, and there we go. As you can see, we have a nice clear picture in back of us. It's a wide angle. And even with it right off center like that, it still looks pretty darn great. The picture quality is good for the budget price and for the super ease of use. I'm actually pretty happy with this thing. So there you go, friends. That was an absolutely dead simple installation. Probably the easiest one out there. So upsides and downsides. Upside, obviously super easy installation, plug and play experience. That was one of the easiest cameras I've ever installed. Downside, this does need to be powered on and made sure it's powered up before each use. So you may have to take it down, which means getting up on a ladder potentially, getting it down, charging it up. Again, to save on battery life, you may need to power it off if you take long stops along your road trip or anything like that. But again, if you want a super simple experience, this may be the camera for you. So if you're interested in this camera, go check it out. We'll put links in the description box below. Hopefully this has helped. If it has, hit that thumbs up button. We're making a bunch more Sprinter Van tutorial videos to make your life just a little bit easier. Thanks for watching, friends. We'll see you again on the next one.